Hello everyone and welcome to another Commander Tactics video. My name is Pope. As we depart Dominaria and Ravnica, I wanted to share with you my picks for the top Commander cards coming to us out of Throne of Eldraine. This set has some amazing new cards that I think will find a home in many EDH decks, and even more options to bling out our current decks. Let's kick things off in white with True Love's Kiss, Hushbringer, and Harmonious Archon. True Love's Kiss is a budget-friendly instant that lets us exile a target or enchantment, which white is already pretty good at, but it also lets us refill this card's use by drawing a card out of our deck. Hushbringer is a hate bear flying life linker with 1-2 that almost shuts down just about every commander deck out there. It reads, creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. This can really affect our opponents if they are running death effects or ETB effects heavily. And Harmonious Archon is a huge 4-5 bodied flyer costing 4 generic and 2 white mana, but it says non-Archon creatures have power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. When Harmonious Archon enters the battlefield, we create 2 1-1 one, one human creature tokens. This can be incredible for any of our go-wide EDH decks, and it is also going to shut down any of those big creature decks our opponents might be running. In blue, we have Midnight Clock, Emery, Lurker of the Lock, and Mirror Maid. Midnight Clock is a inefficient mana rock costing two and a blue to tap for just a blue, but its real ability is that at the beginning of each upkeep, you put an hour counter on it, and then whenever it hits 12 hour counters, you shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library and draw seven new cards. At first, I didn't think much of Midnight Clock until I realized that it triggers at each upkeep, even our opponents. So that means after three rotations of the table, we are going to get to reshuffle our hand and graveyard into our deck and get seven new cards. That is just great value. Emery has been getting a lot of attention as a real powerhouse in artifact decks. The spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. When Emery, Lurker of the Lock, enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you can tap her and choose an artifact card in your graveyard and cast it this turn. Super powerful in any of those artifact blue decks that are already looking really good, such as Urza, and is really just going to be a great new card in those type of decks. And lastly, we have Mirror Maid. Mirror Maid is a card I think will be sticking around for quite some time. It says for one and two blue mana, you may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. This means ones that we control or our opponents control. This could be Gilded Lotus, this could be Mana Vaults, Mana Crypts, all those super powerful artifacts or enchantments. We can have a copy of it on our side of the field for only three mana. In black, we have Sir Conrad the Grim, Black Lance, Paragon, and Wish Claw Talisman. Sir Conrad is just a wall of text, but it is a powerhouse. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves the graveyard, Sir Conrad is going to deal one to each opponent. This is an incredible ability that can really ping down our opponents super fast out of nowhere, combos extremely well with Necropotents and other cards that are going to let us exile cards from our graveyard. Black Lance Paragon is one of those cards that I think is currently flying under the radar and most people are not paying too much attention to. But for only one in a black, we can flash in a 3-1 Knight. And when Black Lance Paragon enters the battlefield, Target Knight gains Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. Now, it does not say another knight, so Black Lance Paragon can be used on itself. This means if our opponent is swinging in with a big creature, we can flash this in, give itself Death Touch and Life Link, kill the attacking creature, and gain 3 life in doing so. A super strong removal on a creature. And lastly, Wish Claw Talisman. This card enters the battlefield with three charge counters on it. We can pay one, tap it, and remove a Wish Counter from it to search our library for any card and put it into our hand. So a demonic tutor. And then an opponent gains control of Wish Claw Talisman. And you can only activate this on your turn. Giving Wish Claw Talisman to another opponent doesn't matter in the instance where maybe you want them to be an ally and they're going to help you. Or if you're about to kill them and just win the game outright, this card is super strong and I think will be in many artifact decks and black decks going forward. Red has a few new cards that I think will be fun to play with in Embercleave, Torbrin, Thane of Redfell, and Iron Crag Pyromancer. 
Ember Cleave is just a beast of an equipment with a whole bunch of attacks for four and two red. It says Flash. This spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, you can attach it to a creature you control and the equipped creature gets plus one plus one, has double strike and trample. After declaring attackers with no blockers, we can flash this in, give something double strike, maybe a Voltron commander and kill our opponents without them ever having a chance to respond. Torbrin is a new legendary creature that offers an ability we haven't seen very often, but it says if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So this can add up if we are going for board wipes or pinging effects and really take things down a lot quicker than we would normally be able to in red. And Ironcrad Pyromancer says whenever you draw your second card each turn, Ironcrad Pyromancer deals three damage to any target. Now a three cost, that's two in a red, on a zero four body isn't too exciting. But if we're drawing two cards on every turn, including our opponents, we are able to lightning bolt down any creatures on the board or our opponent's face whenever we want. Green has, in my opinion, some of the most exciting new cards in Kenris Transformations, Questing Beast, and the Great Henge. Kenris Transformations as Enchant Creature. When this enters the battlefield, we draw a card so it replaces itself, which is great, and the Enchanted Creature loses all abilities and is a 3-3 Green Elk. This can be used on our opponent's commanders. Green doesn't have great selections for single target removal beyond Beast Within, so for only 2 mana, this is an incredible card that even replaces itself by allowing us to draw a card. Questing Beast is a 4-4 Legendary Beast for 2 a green and a green with Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Can't be blocked by creatures of power 2 or less. Combat damage that would be dealt to creatures we control can't be prevented, so no fog effects. And whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. A real powerhouse in any big green decks that are going to be looking to play big creatures. Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste make this not only a great offensive threat, but also a defensive threat in case we need to hold back and defend anything of ours. And then my favorite new card from the set, the Great Henge Legendary Artifact for 7, a green, and a green. Reads, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So with green, we're going to be running a lot of big creatures, making this hopefully only cast 2 green mana. It taps for 2 green, and you gain 2 life when it taps. And also has the added benefit of whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. The amount of value this artifact produces for only what is most likely to be two mana is just insane. Then if we ever are having a way to untap it, it, it can go off out of nowhere and just absolutely dominate games. The multicolor cards coming out of Throne of Eldraine are also pretty exciting with Fayborough Elder, Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, and Dance of the Mance. That is so fun to say, Dance of the Mance. Fayborough Elder has Vigilance. It's a 0-0, but it says Fayborough Elder gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. So just by having this card on the field, it will be a plus two, plus two. But its last line of text is what really gives it the juice. It says tap it and for each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. Now a similar card to this is Bloom Tender and that card is $50. So this is a nice budget alternative that can tap for five mana in a full color deck if we have those many permanents out on a three CMC body. Garrick Curse Huntsman, an incredible new planeswalker. His plus zero ability says create two 2-2 two, two black and green wolf creature tokens with when this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garrick you control. So if we were able to use this and one of them dies, he will already be up to ultimate status. Or if we need to minus three him, we can destroy any target creature and draw a card. And then his ultimate says you get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus three, plus three, and have trample. I think Garrick won't fit into every Golgari deck, but it will have a home in some, and that plus three, plus three emblem will be huge. And lastly, Dance of the Mance says return up to X 
target artifacts and or non or enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is 6 or more, those permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. Now this ability is crazy. If we pull out a bunch of big enchantments and artifacts, they are permanently 4-4s. Four, but in the instance where we don't want them to be creatures, we can just put 5 into X and get back 5 artifacts and enchantments. This ability absolutely blows my mind and I think this is going to be one of the craziest cards in the set. And last but not least, taking a look at some of the new lands coming in from Throne of Eldraine, we have Castle Garenberg, Mystic Sanctuary, and Fabled Passage. Castle Garenberg says Castle Garenberg enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest. Tab for a forest, but then it has this, this nice little line of text that says, For two, a green and a green, we can tap it and get six green mana. This is free land ramp. It is crazy powerful, and I can guarantee we will be seeing this run in a mono green decks, in standard, in commander, in just about every format going forward. Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands, so this is most likely going to be in a blue heavy deck. When Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield untapped, you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. If we are playing flicker decks and we find a way to blink Mystic Sanctuary, we can return as many instants and sorceries as we want. I think this card will definitely find a busted use to be a value recursion engine in a mono blue deck. And next up we have Evolving Wild 2.0 aka Fabled Passage. It reads, tap, sacrifice Fabled Passage, search your library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tap. But if you control four or more lands, untap that land. So if this is your fourth land because it counts itself, you basically get a free basic land of any choice. This card is so good. This card goes in just about every multicolored EDH deck ever, and I can only imagine the price is going to go up, up, up. But those are going to do it for my picks for new Throne of Eldraine cards. I am so excited for this set and can't wait to get my hands on some of the new borders and new spells. But I'd love to hear what cards you think are going to make an impact on the EDH format coming out of Throne of Eldraine. Let me know down in the comments below which cards you agree with and disagree with and what cards I missed. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm doing stuff right. And if you want to know when the next video goes live, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you in the next one.